Okay, so this last session for the day, we're gonna talk about troubleshooting pilot simulations. And so there is a directory examples uh, debugging where we've intentionally put in errors in the files um, that are relatively common. And so what we'll do is uh, I'll run the script, we'll see the error message, We'll sort of, I'll walk you through what the error message means, and then I'll ask to see if we can try and guide you through identifying what the error is and how to fix it. Um, so first, uh, a, one of the issues that people have in trying to troubleshoot uh, and sort of set up simulation is knowing what parameters are available. Um, and uh, the Appendix B, the pilot manual, lists all of the components. So if you want to know, uh, if you have trouble sort of sifting through all of the sort of discussion of the various fault interfaces, boundary conditions, and you just want to see what the list is of what's available and what sort of the specification is in terms of what's the path to, to set uh, them, look at Appendix B. It lists, you know, the name of the component, and it lists a brief description of what that component is. Um, and so things like for problem, you will see that there is a time dependent problem. There's always, a, there's also a greens function problem. Boundary conditions, Duracell BC, faults, we've talked about fault cohesive kinematic materials, output managers, readers, so forth. Um, and then there's the properties, which are the basic types as well. Um, and so, you know, if it's an energy value, there may be a validator that says it must be greater than such and such. Um, and that'll, you'll see that when you look at the parameter viewer. Um, we've sort of talked about this enough, their graphical user interface, uh, how to load it up. Um, and so, but what we didn't talk about is using the command line to get help directly getting help directly from the command line. So if you know which component is of interest and you want to sort of see what properties are available rather than having to launch the uh, web browser, start up, load your parameter file and so forth, you can do it directly from the command line. And so uh, that's where we'll start. So I'm going to start with the 3D uh, example, 3D subduction step two, which is what we ran in the earlier session. And I'm going to run step zero two. I'm not going to, there are other .cfg files um, that were required to actually run the simulation. But if I just do help in pilot, uh, this is the output. Whoops, let's get this. This is the output. So um, basically, we're going to give you uh, hints on where to find information when you run dash dash help. Um, and uh, it gives you some suggested solver debugging settings and then it gives you directions on how to get help it also lists sort of some of the command line arguments you can use to get help and that's what we're going to go over um, and so with, remember within let's see step uh zero two how do i know what is available um well you see up here that at the very top level, my top level component is pilot app. That's the application. And the properties are, and it lists all of the properties, and then it lists a bunch of facilities. Now, all of the facilities are listed included in the properties. That's just the way Pyre does it. Um, but uh, we can get help. We can go one level down now by doing a help for, say, one of these facilities. So we can do problem.help. Now it doesn't spit out that top information. Um, oops. Let's get this a little higher up so people can see it. Um, so here's where we started. Um, now my component, my problem is of type time dependent and it has properties for the boundary condition, dimension, elastic pre-step, formulation, gravity field, and so forth. And I want to dive in, down into one of the boundary conditions. So let's dive down one more layer and do boundary condition help. Um, and let's see, 
So now we have, here are our different, uh, one, two, three, here's our five boundary conditions. So let's look at the Z negative boundary condition. And here are our properties. So let's get information about the database rate. We'll do help. Uh, it's a null component, so that's telling me um, what it has, that it's a null component. So uh, there's no initial, there's no data, spatial database for the rate. I can do help dash components. And it says there's no null component does not have any facilities. I can do help properties. And it says what, well, there's only help information because it's a null component. So, oops, it's not what I wanted to do. So now let's look at database initial and do help properties. And here you can see that uh, this is a zero displacement database. It has no data, it has no values. Um, so not particularly interesting, but you do see that it has a label that is of type string there's no documentation available for that. It has a default value of zero displacement bounding condition. Its current value is dir slash bc on minus c from my pilot app.cfg file line 167. So it tells me exactly where it got the, the value for that parameter. And say I wanted to change it to something else, then I know exactly where to go in my pilot app.cfg file to identify. So this is the same type of information we get in the GUI browser parameter viewer, but uh, it's directly here from the command line and I can get just that one piece of information um, about uh, any current property or facility. Um, and so that's 